Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, I mentioned earlier on, I was talking to my friend this morning, actually. She's very good. She campaigns with me here in Ireland um, about this year and how bad it's been um, for me with um, receiving just a continuous, I don't know, non-stop abuse, mostly online. But it was also um, happening offline. And I want to talk about it and how it impacts my life and how it affects my family, and my reputation, um, in general, how, how it's causing an awful lot of um, anxiety and, and stress. This year, I suppose, has been the worst. I, I've been campaigning against quack treatments since 2014, so nearly five years now. And, you know, I'm used to the odd anti-vaxxer or quack coming out and, you know, calling me names. There's been a few petitions over the last three years on change.org. Um, I'm very angry with change.org. They allow people to go on there, uh, anonymous people, no name, no verification, and they can um, abuse and bully. I've had horrendous things said about me on a change.org platform. I've had to get a solicitor involved, I think, one, two, three times now. I think there's been seven petitions. There's one running as we speak. And I really find it, I firstly just want to point out the people that are doing these petitions um, are all working together, but they, they do this anonymously so that they're, they're cowards. You know, that's what you are. You can't go out there and defame and um, use ableist language, uh, disgusting slander on your own name. You have to be fake. You have to be a troll. So you're just a worthless human being. Um, I just wanted to let you know that. Anyway, this, these petitions are ongoing, and this was the worst part. I moved house this February. We had to leave our old house because the landlord was selling it. So it was an awful lot of people for me and my kids. And um, moved in here in February of this year. Whilst I moved in here, my mother was really ill in hospital. I was also giving evidence in a court case up in Kildare in relation to Patrick Merlin, and he lost his appeal, so it was just non-stop. Then I got pneumonia in my right lung, and it's, it's just been a terrible year, actually, to be honest with you. We're lucky we've got a home, and it's lovely here, but it's just been really stressful. And um, thankfully, my mum got out of hospital and, and is, is doing good. But at the same time, I had this horrendous harassment from Amanda Mary Jewell. She's a quack living in Belize, an English lady who's been giving MMS bleach to autistic children and awful quack treatments to vulnerable people with cancer, um, she's just probably the worst quack out there. In fairness, Amanda Mary, you deserve a medal for being the worst quack of all. And um, she took it upon herself to pen a blog, a very long blog, with just horrendous content targeting members of my family, horrendous slander. She called me a murderer. I mean, God help you, woman. One day you will be back on UK soil or Irish soil and I will sue you because you have done horrendous things to me and my family. This blog was shared by other quacks and then there was a petition to tie in with that blog and it was just a nightmare. She also told people to come to my home. She found my new address. She put this online. She told people to come to the town square, encouraging them to assault me and beat me up. So her friends are saying they're going to come and beat me up. They were going to attack me. It was just I've never seen such hate and abuse, actually. It was it was really, really frightening. And um so it's not just the name calling. She's putting all my personal information online, where I live, my family members, my children's names. That, wasn't, that blog is still up there, by the way, because I can't get it down, because um, she lives in um, Belize or Mexico, wherever she's hiding now. However, then came, I think there was nine Reddit blogs, again, penned by an anonymous troll, slandering me because I was giving evidence at another MMS trial. So that's two this year, guys, okay? And... It was just awful. These, these blogs ha were talking about my kids. They had photographs of my children. Um, I, I just, I, I, I really, really, really found it hard to keep my head above water, especially when I was going to give evidence. And the dental council were helping me cope with this because they were getting these blogs sent to them as well. Um, these people just don't want me to speak. And it's gone beyond censorship. They're trying to destroy my life. Then these blogs were printed up 
and sent to family members. I don't even know how they got the addresses. They were posted, actually. One of them was posted in a West Cork town near where I live. So just, just to recap, I'm dealing with all this abuse, these petitions, this hate, people sharing my personal details, whilst moving house, whilst my mum is unwell, whilst giving evidence in court, and whilst trying to, you know, function as a family. Um, a mother to five children, two autistic. I've also got Asperger's, you know, so I'm on the autism spectrum as well, but d d this doesn't matter to these people. Now, this isn't all MMS quacks doing this. I just want to make this point. There are other people that have linked in with these people that are into quack treatments that are part of this abuse. I have seen comments um, penned by homeopaths and anti-vaxxers um, saying the most dreadful things. And eventually it gets to you. And I suppose this year, you know, this has all been piling up. And then there's other things going on in my life that people are aware of that I can't talk about. Um, and it's been really, really just hell. In fact, I can't sleep. I, I, I'm going through such a, a terrible stage of insomnia. And um, I just want people to know, I've done this for one reason. You know, I, I stood up and spoke out against MMS back in 2014. I was studying in UCC and I heard about this quackery. And I really thought something would be done about it. And something was done. There was awareness made. We had one man prosecuted in Ireland, but he's still advertising it. So there's so much that needs to be done. And there's other people out there doing good work as well, fighting to end this quackery in Ireland, in England, in all countries around the world. However, I wasn't expecting this kind of, um, you know, targeted harassment, which is just relentless, continuously. And I don't understand it, actually, because it's not even the fact that the Genesis 2 are, you know, doing this on a, on a daily basis. It's like there's people almost employed to um, try and destroy my life. And know people tell me about Scientology and Fair Game. This is Fair Game, actually. And maybe Scientology are involved. They wrote a blog about me, um, which is available for people to see. More slander and hate. Um, but it's not like people calling you names or, you know, trolling. It's like, it's a deliberate planned attack to try and not just censor me and stop speaking out against this quackery but to destroy my life and to hurt my family and that's what's going on here you know this latest petition um, which is online you know describes me as being somebody who's basically not competent not able to function the poor autistic woman you know the language the ableist language you know basically is so humiliating and embarrassing. And if you've signed a change to all petition, this petition is going to be sent to you because that's what they do. They sent it to me this morning. Yes, asking me to sign the petition that is slandering me and degrading me and humiliating me. You know, my family can see that petition. So I suppose I want to just try and ask a question to the people that are behind this harassment. What kind of a human being are you or human beings are you that you can sit down just think about it. Sit down behind your computer screen and pen such hate and such slander. All done anonymously. You can't even do it under your own name. What kind of a person does that make you? And you know who I'm talking about, guys, because you know who you are. And they have children, these people. They have children and they're doing this whilst their children are in the house with them. They're sitting down and going, oh, look, I'm going to do this now. Maybe you need to stop and think about the impact that that is having on my family. And you go out there then and you protest and you're like presenting yourselves as anti-corruption, trying to help the ordinary man and woman on the street. But you don't care about any human being except yourself and your ever-growing ego or egos. And, um, you know, it's just like the song is an instant karma. You know, I, I really believe it's coming and you know what? It's going to be like a house of cards because once this unfolds, and it is unfolding, you know, heads will roll. There's going to be a payback for the trauma and the abuse that you have delivered to my door, especially this year. I have no problem with someone coming online and saying, I don't agree with what you're saying, Fiona O'Leary. I don't agree with your stance on vaccines. I don't agree with your attitude or opinions against quackery. That's fine. 
let's have a civil discourse. But these animals, which is what they are, savages, cannot do that. No, they have to target my appearance, being on the autism spectrum, accuse me of poisoning my children because I vaccinated them. They have to send hate-filled blogs where I'm called a murderer to my sister-in-law and to other people. They have to try and destroy my life. They have to try and get people to come and abuse and beat me. So that's what I'm trying to highlight here, the mindset of these people. Um, there's something wrong with them. And like I said, entitled to your opinion. If you love homeopathy, great. You know, but I can say I don't love homeopathy and I can say what I want because that's what it's all about, isn't it? But these quacks and the people supporting this harassment campaign against me, which is real, um, can't do that. No. They either A, block you, or they will abuse you. Block or abuse, or block and abuse, because they will set up a fake account and they will create petitions like the one that's online right now. But they're getting messy, and you know what I mean when I say that, because I am not putting up this anymore, and I'm in a strong position right now, and you know what I mean when I say that, and this is not going to lead to anything positive for you or those involved, that's all I can say. Um, I'm going to keep speaking out, but I suppose I just want people to appreciate how hard this is for me and my family, and this year especially, I'll be glad to see the back of 2018. Um, but people need to be mindful when they're going out and they're doing this kind of unpaid work to protect children from abusive products like MMS, the kind of people that you're going to end up engaging with. And you need to prepare yourself for that. And if you can't do it, don't do it. Because I'm quite a strong person. Um, but this has really, really knocked me for six. Um, physically, mentally. And I want to be able to say that. You know, I want to be able to say that this is upsetting me, it's stressing me out, and it doesn't mean I'm going to not stop speaking out, but, you know, I'm a human being at the end of the day, and there's only so much abuse one can take, and I have certainly had my fill, and I saw some posts by Melania Trump saying she's the most bullied woman in the world. Yeah, meet me for coffee, Melania, and I can tell you a few horror stories. Um, I live in a tiny country in Ireland, and most of this abuse is being done within this country. I've had a few trolls from America. Sometime on YouTube, I wake up to crazy comments, you know. Um, but most of it is done here. There's one person, actually, from... Um, he used to be in People Before Profit. He was booted because, obviously, he's off the rails. But he's been abusing me awfully on YouTube. There's a lot of men, actually, that have um, been targeting me with abuse, um, which is just, again, really cowardly, isn't it? Um, but, you know, I am a woman... And I want to be able to talk about this abuse. I want to be able to, I suppose, try and deliver that when I do the campaign work and doing all that, that I have a life and I have a reputation and my reputation has been shredded, absolutely shredded, and it's being shredded as we speak. You know, if I wanted to go and try and get a job or apply for something in college, they can see all this abuse and all this defamation online about me. And that's why these people are dangerous, because it's not just about not agreeing with your stance on these treatments. They want to destroy me. They want to, I don't know, kill me. The hate is so strong. Um, and there's a pattern. You know, this has happened before, but not on this level, um, where people have rallied together. People here in Ireland, some of these people have been in jail because they're criminals to try and, um, what was it, one comment, yeah, by Anthony Carlin, uh, the ex-policeman from the North who was giving MMS to autistic kids, said he wanted to stomp on my face like putting out a cigarette. So it's real violence. And this is all Jim Corr's friends. Jim is allowing this as well in his timeline for these men to come on and threaten to assault me. Um, it's awful. And there's nothing done about the online abuse. You know, the guards do nothing, um, which is, again, gives them the right and the freedom to do this. But these petitions and the people that are doing this, um, you don't have a life. You're obviously very sad people. And um, I just wanted to ask a question, I suppose. How do you wake up with such hate in your heart every day and plan to do this? 
You know, what is it? It must weigh a ton. Your heart must be so heavy in your chest. Um, and some of you, you know who you are, have been doing this for a long time. So your heart must not only be heavy, it must be black with hate. It must really hurt to carry that hate in your body. Because I don't hate. In fact, I said this to my friend, I pity a lot of these people that are doing this. Um, because there's something wrong with them. To be continuing on doing this, and they have families, and they have children, like I say, that are listening to this. Um, which, in a sense, in a, in a way, is abusive. And what kind of a message are they sending to their children when they are doing this themselves? And their children too can see this, you know? So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I think, I think I've covered it all, I don't know. Um, I'm just hoping things will, will turn around soon. I feel a little bit more confident um, in the last few days. And I can't really say any more about that. But I suppose it's just a message to the people doing this. Um, maybe you need to get... Look at, look at yourselves. Take a long look in the mirror and think about what you're doing and how it impacts other people's lives, not just my life, my family, my friends, etc. And maybe you should think about making an appointment with a therapist. And I'm, I'm being really serious because there's something wrong with you uh, mentally. There's something wrong with you if you have to sit down and do this. Um, but one day it will all come crashing down because that's how it works, isn't it? Um, but I want to thank people for the support um, with all that's going on. You know who you are. And especially my friend that talks to me in the morning. Um, and look, we are doing good work fighting this quack, these quack treatments. And it's just we're up against a really, really nasty group of people. And um, like I said, they're not able to have a normal conversation. They have to tear you to shreds. And sometimes it gets a bit dark and creepy. And I am in that darkness right now. And um, I'm hoping one day I'll be entering the light again soon. Thanks for watching. And always say no to abuse and stand up for those that are being abused. Um, this is one thing I just want to close on. I haven't been physically assaulted. But you know what? The mental and emotional abuse is a lot worse. Because that's the stuff that keeps you awake at night. And it kind of, you know, it, it, it kind of, it, it scars you. It leaves an imprint that doesn't go away. And I think emotional abuse is absolutely probably the worst of all. And um, for those that have done that to me and to my family, shame on you. You'll have no luck for it. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.